the following video it's going to be about setting up uh, the control over of the CPX API EP M12, so basically this module over Ethernet IP, uh, sorry, over Modbus TCP. And in this particular case, what we have is this is the Ethernet IP or Modbus mo module, and then this one is an IO link module. So on the second module, what we have is we have uh, an IO link uh, linear axis, so basically an electric motor with an IO link. Um, board and we're going to be controlling this through a um, proface um, PL, uh, p simulated PLC. So the first thing that you got to do is you got to make sure that this module is communicating to the IO-Link device. In this case our IO-Link device we have it connected to port, port 0 so we have it set to IO-Link auto start and then the device, the particular device that we're using, it's an ELGS. So let me show you a picture here. So it's actually this one, ELGS ball screw. So it has a motor attached to it, and then the the linear uh, actuator. This actuator in particular uses two bytes of process data, and you can see it on this little uh, table. So two two bytes for process data in, and two bytes for process data out. Okay. Now, if we go to, there's a couple of things that are, that are important here in terms of mapping. So if we go here and then we click under Modbus TCP, oh, I mentioned the two bytes because of something. If you scroll all the way down here on the IO link, in this particular case, we're, sh we're choosing variant two, which will give you the two bytes that we need for this device. If you need more information about this, you can always refer to the IO link uh, or to the IO link ma uh, user manual for this module. Now, going to the software side of things. So this is GP Pro EX for, for Proface, and the biggest thing to know here is that there's just certain things that you gotta account for. So you you're gonna go to device PLC under peripheral settings. And then in this case, we're using Modbus IDA. You could also use some other um, versions of this or some other options, which is like, uh, I think it's Schneider SA or something like that. But in this case, we're using Modbus IDA and then the uh, series is general Modbus TCP master. Usually you would change, you would select this here. So Modbus IDA, general Modbus TCP master, ethernet TCP. Now here, the basic things that you have to configure. This is the IP address of this, um, so this module right here. The remember the first module that I mentioned, the CPX API EP module. That's the IP address of that module, and you can see it on the top, 192.168.11. So that's the IP address of this module. Now, if I go back here, this is the as you can see the IP address. Port number is 502. That's the that's the default. Okay, so the port number is 502, as I mentioned. Unit ID, uh, you can leave it as default 255. You can also change, change it to one, it should work fine. Um, you could also change the double word, the, the word order, but in this case, we, we left it as it is, and we'll, we'll see the functionality later. Under the function code and max query, we left it also as the default values. I think there's a possibility of limiting the range here, but just for now we did it We did it as this. And this is gonna be the important part here, 400,001, this is what we're gonna be using here in a second. So I'm gonna click cancel here because I didn't make any changes. Then I need to show under Modbus TCP here, this is the web, web visualization for, the, for, the, for this network you click on holding register view. And then under holding register view, you're gonna get all of, all of the holding registers for outputs and inputs. And the important part to notice here is this, where the offsets are for the registers. As you can see, the outputs, they start from zero, but the inputs, they start from 5,000. So if we go back to the configuration where we're creating our screen, this is gonna be our first word for inputs and this is our first word for outputs and this is because it's a, just a button it's going to be a bit but I want to show you here the addressing so on the addressing you're going to see 
here, you're going to you're going to have to select four. You remember the 400,000 that I mentioned and there there's an offset of one. So you have to say four 400,000 and one, that's an offset coming from proface and then 0 0.00 that's for the first bit of that word. Okay? So this value is this here. So it's register 0 and it's pointing to the first bit or bit zero from this register. Okay, so just to recap, this four four hundred thousand and one. This is just a, an offset from from this the software from the GP Pro EX. This point zero zero is the uh, bit number zero of the first register. Okay, so this one is pretty straightforward because it's just it's just that there's no crazy offsets. So, okay, so we're going to click cancel here because we're not going to make any changes, but you notice that this was bit zero, right? So as you can imagine, this is going to be bit 15 or the last bit of that word of the register zero, right? Okay, so now with that, we're covering register zero, which is going to be for port zero, and that is where we have our IO link device connected to. Now, Going back to the inputs, which is which are the ones that have the offset. If I click on this one, now this is the important part. <clears throat> this one has a value of four hundred five thousand and one, and the reason is because remember that there's an offset of, of four hundred and one inherently on the GP Pro EX software, <clears throat> and the five thousand comes from the offset in here. So this is 5,000 is for port 0. So the register 5,000 for port 0 needs to be entered here as 405,001. Okay. Hit enter, and then that's it. And now if we go into the simulation, you're going to see here that we're getting some data. And if we wanted to move in and move out this actuator, we would actually look at the process data out. So if I wanted to move in, for example, I have to turn on bit zero. <clears throat> Remember that, that the bytes are swapped here. So this is bit zero, this is bit eight. So this is gonna be the bit zero of the second byte. So now I can, I can physically see that the actuator moved in. Now I, if I wanna move it out, this is gonna be bit nine. So now it's moving out. And with these two bits, you're controlling the actuator and you're getting the feedback here. So 2560 and 2304. If we were to open calculator, oops, calculator. If we were to open a cal calculator and then we go into the programmer mode and we look at that number, 2304, 2304, so we see here the, let me change to this view. So we can see here, remember that the bytes are swapped. So this is, this is actually the least significant byte here. So we can see that the first bit is on, so bit 0 and bit uh, 3, bit 0 and bit 3. If we look at here, bit 0 says that the state is in, and I can physically see that the actuator is retracted, and then bit 3, state device, meaning that there is a connection to the device. Now I'm going to move, um, going to move the actuator out, and now we see 2560. So I can actually do it here. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be the bit that's going to be on and this is going to be off. So I'm going to switch them here. And you can see 2560 is the value that we're getting here. So it's basically reporting that the actuator is extended or it's in the out position. And I'm looking at the hardware right now. And that is exactly how it is right now. So that was quickly how to set up this uh, configuration in particular over Modbus TCP using the GP Pro EX and software and the CPX API EP module from Festo.